it's not bad. I like this tune. I like this tune. It seems to finally fit. I got a visitor today on the floor. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Smell It Sunday. This is a show where we get together live for a live stream via YouTube to talk about candles, aromatics, and just things that just genuinely make us happy, our common interests. We can get off topic because this is not the main channel. This is not the candle enthusiast. This is Aromatically Speaking, which is my second channel. And those of you who are not subscribed, some of you are saying good morning, some are saying good afternoon. Some of you, it's, I'm sure, thank you for all for joining. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, you're gonna want to subscribe. I'm spending a lot more time and attention to this secondary channel, uh, as it turns out. And look at this. Look who decided to join us. Thank you for the, the, the what do we want to call it? 2.5K uh, subscriber threshold on the main channel, The Candle Enthusiast. Uh, this is Elsa. Elsa has taken a leave of absence recently, and people were concerned. What's going on with Elsa? Is she, is she, is she angry? Is she upset? No, actually she is, uh, she, she, she obtained a lot of knots, right? She had this long, gorgeous hair. She's just a puppy. But, uh, she recently, not recently, it's been, it's been several months now. We had to cut her down. I had to cut her down. Uh, get rid of all of those knots. She's a little bit uneven, but as her fur is coming in, she's looking better and better. She was just embarrassed to be in front of the camera. And now, look at this. She was she was dying to get in front of the camera, and now she's being all shy. Show them their face. Show them the face. That's Elsa. All right, now go take a nap. Go take a nap. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about today. As you can see, I have a big pile goodies by my side. This is essentially uh, content materials. This is stuff that I will be evaluating, things I will be making videos on for the Candle Enthusiast channel and Arom Aromatically Speaking channel. Um, I have been, every time I get a package in, I just put it off to the side, whether it's from you guys, whether it's from uh, uh, my eBay auctions or uh, other, 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 uh, other avenues in which I seek candles, that sounds sketchy, but trust me, it's all legal and, 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 and stuff like that. But I figured instead of just opening them up by myself, I'd show you uh, what is inside in all these boxes. Because some of this stuff is, is quite strange and uh, out of the ordinary. And to be quite frank, I have no clue. I order, I order a lot of stuff. Usually when I, I, I make a video on the stuff, I sell that stuff to help fund the show. Unfortunately, I can't keep a lot of these things. Uh, I do have a candle burning and it's just really acting up right now, so I'm gonna put it over here. Uh, but that's not it. We're, talking, we're gonna be talking about the semi-annual sale. A lot of you uh, have, I'm sure, been shopping for Bath and Body Works semi-annual sale which is really cool. I would love to hear all about that. So the first things first, you know what that is. I have to bring you guys up here on my computer so I don't have to stare into the camera. So the question is, have I gone semi-annual sale shopping? For Yankee Candle, yes, you better believe it. A lot of you are aware of that, but... Um, uh, have I, I'm getting, I'm getting pulled in to all of these videos on YouTube. I gotta, I gotta not look at that. Uh, but for Bath and Body Works, I have it. Uh, I have not gone shopping for Bath and Body Works. One, budgetary reasons for both myself and the show. Uh, but, you know, I think that allows room for other YouTubers or other fellow friends who like to get in front of the camera to evaluate and review cand candles. It gives them something to focus on so that we're all not talking about the same thing. But that does not mean that I am not incredibly interested to see what you guys are purchasing, what you're 
are enjoying that mermaid collection thing. I have to keep my mind away. Uh, uh, Rebecca uh, Johnson will testify for this. We both have like a mermaid fascination. Uh, our favorite movie in the world is uh, one of our favorite movies in the world is Little Mermaid. And people make well, people make fun of me for. It. I don't know if they make. Fun of me. So I got it, you guys. I can read the comments. Look at everybody that's in the house. We got everybody in the house. Um, uh, Hobble Kitty says, I got uh, mostly hand creams for uh, Bath and Body Works on my annual sale, but I did pick up root beer, a root beer candle. And also, I am psyched uh, to, to give, it, uh, give, it, give it a try. Or she says, psyched to get it. So I'm guessing you, you ordered it via the mail which is pretty cool. Uh, um, all right, so we're, we're in good shape here. I got you guys. Now the image is flopped, which, it, which bothers me, but I'm still trying to work on that. How about we start unboxing stuff? I figure we should start doing it. Remember, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. It'll put parentheses around that bell. This way it'll notify you whenever I go live because this is Smell It Sunday. But that's not to say we don't do spontaneous lives. I call them Smell It Live. Yeah, Smell It Live. Uh, that, that's, that's gonna happen all throughout the week for, and sometimes we don't talk about candles. Sometimes it's just about random observations. Maybe I find myself in a predicament. Sometimes I find myself stranded in snow or rain all right so we got our first box really a lot of people think about think about the people who are seeing me for the first time right now if they're still watching how confused they must be you have a 30 something year old guy who's wearing a goonie golf shirt from lake george who's talking about yankee candles bath and body works candles and is speaking rather enthusiastically. I can, I can understand what people would be confused. And speaking about enthusiastically, where is, there it is. Oh, 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 oh. I heard a few people got them in the mail. Can you see that right there? That doesn't say the Mary Tyler Moore show. That says the candle enthusiast, baby, that's right. Still available, still available on the Candle Enthusiast or Aromatic Adventures official eBay page. All I gotta type is the Candle Enthusiast on eBay. You're gonna get one item, and that's gonna be it. Uh, still available for sale. All the proceeds go directly into the show, not for my candle addiction, I assure you. All right, we got a package. This one does have eBay written all over it throw over the shoulder I've ever seen in my life. Um, so this is something that I purchased, but I don't know what it is. It is a Yankee candle. Oh. <sighs> this one I've been waiting for. Um, what is your favorite Yankee candle Christmas candle? Come on, everybody. Everyone who's lurking, everyone who's got a cell phone in their hand, they can type in a response. If you're sitting by your computer, type it in. If you're, if you're doing the dishes, or if you're watching on our TV, I understand it's a little bit hard to, to type in um, your favorite Christmas candle. But what is your favorite? We got, we got mistletoe, car is carols, and Travis says sugared apple, which is technically, I don't think, a, a Christmas or a festive candle. It may be, but that's a great choice nonetheless. We have uh, Merry Christmas. We had Red Apple Wreath. Merry Marshmallows is Trisha. We got uh, Christmas Cookie, Red Apple Wreath, Christmas Magic, Magical Frosted Forest, uh, uh, Christmas Tree, which uh, uh, is Diane's. I, is one of, I've kind of admitted that I'm on the fence between mistletoe and Christmas Tree as far as my favorite. Christmas or pine or coniferous or evergreen uh, scented candle, but one of my all-time I'm back. I'm back. Hold on. I don't know what that was all about. 
switch my method of well just switch to cellular service my favorite one of my favorite christmas candles other than um mistletoe and christmas tree uh is going to be gingerbread and gingerbread did get some pours in 2017 so it is like what i was saying before it cut out it is available uh, in outlets you'll find it on ebay for reasonable prices but really it was a candle that came out in 2009 after it had been gone for several years uh but a lot of people are not aware that uh, gingerbread does go back pretty pretty far far uh in yankee candles history and this is going to be a black band and i have learned how to identify I'll, I'll get back to that later identify the age of these black band candles actually had someone explain it to me at the Yankee Candle Village. This is going to be a gingerbread, a uh, black band gingerbread. And what's really special about this one is that I really, you know, in my searches of Google image searches, in all the years, you know, I'm on eBay searching for uh, vintage Yankee candles. This is not, I, I just, this one does just, it just does not and how awesome is that picture instead of the classic gingerbread house that we usually see we have a gingerbread family yes a gingerbread family that they all have smiles on their faces except for this guy right here with the funny hairdo with the little superman spit curl uh they're sitting comfy in a basket uh ready to be packaged up as a gift perhaps and um, this one does go, uh, this is, this dips, how do I want to say it? It's before the new millennium, let's put it that way. Um, but I, the exact date right now, I, I can't figure it out. It has been lit, and as you can see, uh, it looks like it's been lit pretty sloppily. Even that wick is off center. I will fix the wick, I have my methods. Uh, I'm going to fix the wick and get rid of all of this disgusting tunneling while homogenizing the top uh, layer of wax here so that this will burn just like brand new. But what's really important is, holy moly, this is incredibly strong. Can you, can you, can you see like the tint of this glass? I don't know. Let me get a, another Yankee. I don't have an. Well, here's. Okay, there. That's a good. There, there, there's a good illustration of what I'm talking about. I know it's a little bit out of. Uh, our reception is not the greatest right now, but look at the color difference. Uh, because of the oils that have uh, accumulated on top of this glass throughout the years super strong super aromatic i don't know if i will be burning this uh this is just uh really for uh the the collection i do want to make a video around christmas time chronicling uh, i want to revisit the I've, I've reviewed and evaluated the gingerbread candle several times by yankee candle but i want to uh, maybe do a side by side with a black band versus a contemporary candle uh to me the, the best pour of, uh, if you can get it, of gingerbread uh, was the 2009. That's when it really came back uh, with the vengeance. And um, that one was super, super strong as a very hard one go. But after I make a video, chances. But that's not it. We got more at the, the Yankee Candle Village, which is the flagship sh flagship store in South Deerfield. And I purchased a lot of items, a lot of goods. Uh, some of the things I showed you, um, some of the things uh, are for, were for uh, the subscription boxes. The Candle Enthusiast, the show has its own subscription box. It's not a fan club, it's a subscription box, right? 
you know what subscription boxes, right, Are So uh, in all the, 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 the description sections of all my videos, there's a link to Patreon and my account there. It'll show you how you can be a part of the subscription box family if you uh, want to do that. Again, all the money is uh, donated right back into the show. But in any case, I buy a lot of the stuff. Uh, this past month was really a Yankee Candle semi-annual sale themed box. So I bought a lot of that stuff. Uh, those boxes went out. I think Trisha's in the house. I don't know if you guys want to be identified as being subscription box members, but there's uh, we, have a f we have a few in the house. Um, a couple candles that have been on my list to get. One, one is actually a favorite, and I, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't own it. I don't think I've ever owned it, but every time I see it and every time I smell it, I'm like, I have to get this, I have to get this. Um, it was a candle that was off my radar for a long time, um, and if anyone's watched some of my uh, Living Enthusiastically vlog, vlog series, uh, or just know me, you know, because uh, I bring it up in conversation all the time. The, the metaphor of the river, the Hudson River, has always been this big um, symbol in my life. Um, and the, the idea of, you know, the future representing, you know, crossing that river. How do you get to the other side? You're probably like, who cares? Who cares? But uh, over the river, I mean, is perfect, a perfect candle uh, that... Uh, really hits close to home because of that that Hudson River concept that looks nothing like the well I guess it could look like the Hudson River you got the the mountainous region over here um, but uh, beautiful image it used to be of course much larger this candle does go back many years to me this is a more delicate version of crisp fall night it really is uh, you take away a little bit of the muskiness a little bit of the power you still get the mossiness you still get the peppercorn you still get that lavender uh, but it's a little bit more delicate so if you like crisp fall night good chance you're gonna like over the river or better yet if crisp fall night is you like it but it's too strong over the river now uh so i finally bought it i will get it in the larger label one day but the reason Dun, 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 dun. I'm not full of myself, folks, but that is the Candle Enthusiast logo. And the reason why you have to do this one day in your life at the Yankee Candle Village store is because if you go into your local retail, they, they'll print a custom label. But, and they look great. Don't get me wrong. They look great. But they are have like a satin finish. If you bump them in the wrong way, they will scratch. It, you know, it's it's good, but it's just not perfect. The Yankee Candle Village store prints real, like real Yankee Candle labels. These are scratch resistant. They're super high resolution. So you can really send them the highest resolution photo that you have. Uh, it is super accurate with the colors. Uh, super sharp, vivid, and yeah, scratch resistant. And you can see how that, the reflection off my face. They have the printer that the pop-up store had in New York City for the Soho pop-up event, which, which, news, news alert, I will hopefully, um, uh, what is with Sundays and motorcycles? I don't, I don't get it. Um. Uh, I, ha I have news about Candle Power, the pop-up Yankee Candle storefronts. It looks like, it looks like we'll be seeing it again. I don't know if this means in New York City or in other cities, but who knows? Y uh, Yankee Candle, Chesapeake Bay and Woodwick, or Candle Power pop-up storefront could be coming to a city near you, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I wanted to show you that real quick. Beautiful labels, beautiful labels highly recommend i don't know if the williamsburg store has the same printer it's this it's it, it's a i don't i don't know how much the printer's worth but it's supposed to be this really fancy printer not only that but they got the big the big massive 
you know, like six times life size uh, house warmer jar that they had at the pop up storefront at uh, South Deerfield. They pretty much got everything that was at that pop up store at South Deerfield. Now, I got another candle. It looks like it's the same candle, but it's a little different. I also got the label on it. And the reason why uh, I got this one is because crisp morning air is one of my favorites. I just keep saying that one of my favorite candles, but it truly is probably on my top five. And considering that this is not really an old candle, what is this? Two, was it released in 2015? It was 2015. Yeah, I think it was 2015, maybe even later than that, um, uh, that this candle was released. This image always hit close to home for me. It reminds me of Pro uh, Prospect Park in uh, Brooklyn, New York, but m more special than that is the aroma. The only problem with this candle, the to me, was for whatever reason, the the if you if you check out this candle like in an outlet, it's a good chance it's going to be uh, kind of like a, a key lime green color, or at least a portion of it. The wax just got very discolored quick and. Um, this is a brand new pour. They poured this for the semi-annual sale, 2018. It does have the smaller label, but I wanted to see, I wanted, first of all, I want, wanted one that's unlit and I wanted to see if this one, they, if they had fixed that discoloration issue. There's some candles that just, no matter what you do, no matter what the environment, no matter your, your attention to uh, keeping them out of sunlight and humidity, they will just change color on you. But um, so far, so good, even though this is brand new. But I had to get my hands on that. Um, this candle right here is going to be key uh, for an upcoming review that I'm doing on a, a new candle for 2018. That is an autumn candle. I showed it to most of you, Enchanted Moon. Uh, I spent uh, yesterday working on about six, seven candles, uh, taking my notes um, and trying to wrap my head around the fragrances, fragrances, figuring out what I want to say for my reviews. Believe it or not, it takes a lot longer than you guys might think. And, um, and today and tomorrow, I'm going to be filming those evaluations. So Enchanted Moon, I really do wish that I had it up earlier for you guys but I had that kind of a surprise video that popped up a couple days ago did you guys see it the birthplace of Yankee Candle did anybody watch that one I know some of you guys did I and mean, while you're answering that question and don't feel like like I'm gonna be hurt if you said no um, I want to read some of your comments here um, Wow, uh, really crazy <laughs> comments. I really got to pay more attention to your guys' comments. Uh, I am a member of the mug owning elite, says Eric. My favorite gingerbread scent is oh god, we got we got we got we got French Anne Marie, but it's from Diptyque. Highly recommend it. Uh, if you can find it on eBay, you know what? I'm gonna take a screenshot. Bam, uh, I will take a look. A look for that candle um, I've never owned a diptyque candle before uh, Rachel's a part of the mug owning elite and Trisha is admitting that she she says I love the subscription boxes which is really good I put so much work and thought into them and I, you know it's there is a self-conscious thing going on because I put a lot of sometimes personal things in there that I don't know will translate with certain people you know what I mean? Like trinkets, you know, one time I put like pine cones and leaves from the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery inside a little like sachet. And I didn't know people were like, what? Like, I'm, you're sending me leaves and pine cones? But no, it's from the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Do you get it? That's special. There's like a spiritual thing going on there. And uh, luckily uh, it, was a, it was a hit, but I could see how sometimes things like that might not translate with certain people uh, to grandmother's house we go says Rachel have fun Rachel um, 
Oh, over the river. She's making a joke about over the river. I really thought you were going to grandmother's house. Um, and Rachel, I saw that you were at Finn's. Finn's restaurant. Was it for a shower? My brother, and I guess myself, my brother and, you know, Zero, my, uh, my brother's American Eskimo that I took care of for a long time, a dear member of her family who, who passed this year, um, they lived right above, like, like the ceiling was my brother's ceiling, uh, or my brother's floor. It was just so weird to see, see you in Salem all the time, because it's, it's like, even though I never personally lived there, I spent a lot of time there because my brother was there. So that was kind of cool. I'm not spying on you or anything, Rachel. Um, bu -bu -bum. Candle power everywhere once their leases expire with malls for regular stores. Ooh, ooh. I like Eric. I like oh, and we have Cruise Bat with us. And I still have not got back to Cruise Bat, but I do want to give a huge shout out to Cruise Bat because if it was not for Cruise Bat, he um, essentially insp inspired me to make the, the birthplace of Yankee Candle video. Uh, Cruise Bat has a candle that was made in that paper mill, inside that paper mill, all of those many years ago. Uh, talking with the owner of that mill, um, we couldn't identify how exactly how old that candle was, but it would have been late 70s. So that technically is, Cruise Bat technically has the oldest Yankee candle I have ever seen, even pictured uh, with my own eyes. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm sure the Kittredge family has a collection of old candles, maybe not, because you think they would be on display at the Yankee Candle Village, um, but, uh, on, on that candle, it didn't say South Deerfield, it said Holyoke, and it had the address of the mill. So I went there to take some photos, and then things suddenly took a turn. I turned that day into this great experience where I met the owner of the mill, the original location of the Yankee Candle Factory in the 70s, and in, in the very, very early stages of the 80s. Uh, I, I got to see the space, I got to walk around the space, I got to smell the space. Um, I got to spend some time with David, who has been the owner of that. His family has owned that mill uh, since 1949. So there's so many stories, not just Yankee Candle, but a lot of uh, very important artists and companies got their start in that building. Uh, but it was just a, a small little, you know, I didn't want to take up too much of his time, but I do plan on going back, uh, spend some time with David, the owner of that mill to put together more material for Yankee Candle, but I do really want to give a huge shout out to Cruise Bat because without his candle and without the curiosity that he gave me by showing me the pictures of the candle that he owns, I probably would not have made that stop that day. So um, um, what I will do uh, is, because I didn't thank you personally, Cruise Bat, I will put in the description of that video after this live a little special thank you to you. All right. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Love the history part. Yeah, it just, it, you know, it's funny how all of the years have gone by since I did documentary work. I mean, unless you consider vlogging documentary work, which sometimes it comes to play, sometimes it doesn't. But I used to be a cameraman for documentaries. I never really made my own documentaries, even though I always wanted to. But being a cameraman, making documentaries, especially when you're working in like Los Angeles or New York City, you really have to be clever. And the way you word things um, to convince people to do things on camera that they normally wouldn't do. Uh, I'm not saying I manipulated David, but I definitely, a lot of that knowledge that I had from back in my early 20s was coming to play because I was, I knew he didn't want to show me at first the studio space, but I just had to remind him how important it was, wasn't just to me, but the people that watch me. And once I said that, like, there's people around the world, in Germany, in Italy, in France, in the United Kingdom, they watch me uh, and they would love to see the space that you own. Suddenly, 
he's like, wow, you know, maybe, maybe I wouldn't mind uh, getting a little bit of attention and sharing my space. He was a very lovely guy. But I definitely had to talk him into opening, unlocking those doors. All right. Da, 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 da. We're getting back to... Yes, my sister's baby shower was at Finn, says Rachel. They are moving soon. That is super awesome. Uh, Sister-in-law. Uh, but, 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 it's awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Cruz Batson's thank you. Very welcome. And uh, Laura say, is, 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 uh, is uh, saying thank you to... To cruise back as well. What else did I get at the semi-annual sale? You know what? Let's let's take a break from semi-annual sale. Let's get back to packages. This one is very, very nice. We got we got smiley faces. We got fragile with a star right there. Whoever was this? I don't want to give her a full name. Amy. I, I believe she shops at Home Shopping Network. I don't think this is a follower because of this tag here. Um, oh, wait a minute. They do that at the post office. This might be from a viewer. This might not be. This may be a purchase from eBay. You can never tell. You can never tell. I wish there was a system. Maybe I should get two PO boxes. But either way, I'm sure what's in here is going to be interesting. And I repurpose all of this bubble wrap, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm saving the earth and enjoying candles at the same time. Plus, I'm saving boatloads of money because bubble wrap is expensive. And look at that. I love this. A little added touch. It's not a gift. I bought this. I bought this. And yet, she still wraps it in pink tissue paper. Pink, purple, magenta. That brightens my day. I think I know what this is. Yes, I know what this is. Uh, the earthquake of 2000. I'm forgetting the year now. Uh, I've mentioned it many times when I lived in California in Napa Valley. I had an earthquake that wiped out a lot of my candles. And one of those candles was a very, a lot of them were very special. But one that's kind of at this point hard to replace because of the price that it goes for and its scarcity is one of the candy corns. Uh, I still have the jar, but it's broken, but it was a very special jar. And there it is right there. This was, if I can remember correctly, 2013. Oh no, I will figure out what year this was, but uh, 2013, I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, it might be a 12. Uh, candy corn uh, jar and what's really cool about this is that yes it is an orange tinted uh, house warmer I believe it was also the first time we saw the banner on the neck of the house warmer but what was really cool is that when you burn this candle down this jar turned into a jack-o'-lantern it turned into a jack-o'-lantern. The face would glow like a ja you, uh, you know, your, your, your pumpkin on the front porch. It was such a brilliant concept, uh, almost to the point where I can't believe they only did it once. Um, so I'm glad that I got it empty because now I can actually demonstrate what it looked like. Because I can put a, a, like a tea light in there and show you uh, what the candle looked like. I think Nicole just said something about refilling it. I could certainly do that. I think I might leave this one empty and maybe one day get one that's uh, full. But I, either way, I did technically need to get this, replace it because um, it was one part of my candy corn collection that was missing. Yeah, uh, Rachel says you should try it with a tea light. Tea light or those LED twinkle lights I think would look uh, they, they don't flicker. Whatever happened to those bulbs? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Those bulbs that in the center, they had like the disc and it had like a really weird like Tesla coil flame looking thing inside. Do they still make those? You don't see them. You don't see them. But like in the, you know, like in the 80s, late 70s, which I think that's when they appeared. Uh, those things looked really cool. Um... 
Uh, if anyone knows any information on those, if you, if you know what I'm talking about. But that's cool right there. So getting ready for Halloween, I'm doing a big retrospective on uh, candy corn slash trick or treat. There's a long history between trick or treat and candy corn because there's two, they're two different candles, but they switched names a bunch of times. Like trick or treat used to be candy corn, but then trick or treat became a swirl candle. And then it became a candy corn. It's the history is long. And I finally think I got my brain wrapped around it. I, uh, all of the years I have documented both in my head and on paper. So this Halloween, we're going to do a trick or treat candy corn, witches brew and, uh, some other, other, uh, maybe far lesser known uh, Yankee Candle Halloween scent retrospectives. Did you know there was a candle? I think Laura probably knows this. Several folks know this. Uh, All Hallows Eve. People always ask, why don't they make a candle called All Hallows Eve? They have. They have. It only made one appearance, though, as far as I know. Let's keep going with this. Speaking of Halloween, last year when I was doing my Halloween videos, which is a, a way a lot of you found the Candle Enthusiast channel, um, which was really exciting because Halloween is, I can't say it's my favorite holiday, but man, I mean, Halloween, I mean, it just, I, it gets me so excited. And then uh, it's really what propelled the Candle Enthusiast channel to start was the 2016 preview party but this was a product from last year and i purchased it i evaluated it i even dissected it uh but i sold it because i was so i don't want to say broke but i was so desperate for money to to go out and and film christmas material last year that i had to sell just about all of the stuff that I evaluated last year. Uh, I did save the very, very, very important stuff. Um, but this was one that did get lost. The, like the layered candle with the pumpkin spice and the buttercream. Uh, God, and what was the other one? That one, someone just bid on, I think it was Witch's Brew on the eBay page. Thank you very much, whoever that was. Um, but what's special about this candle, I'm going I'm to try to focus here. This didn't have a name. Uh, the, the year prior, they brought back a name called Toxic Tonic. That was not the first time Yankee Candle released a candle called Toxic Tonic in 2016. It was a blend. It looked like this. It was a blend of Forbidden Apple and not Sweet Seduction. It was Spiced Pumpkin, right? Uh, it was a swirl candle. Swirl candles look like this. And it was called Toxic Tonic scrapped it uh that was mainly sold at uh bed bath and beyond it also was in retail but i, I believe it was made because bath, uh, bed bath and beyond wanted it and then last year they, re they poured this candle which is a surprise because the reason was i was informed by several sources that they were never going to make swirl candles again at least in this form right uh, swirl candles can be a combination of two fragrances that are homogenized, but these have to be hand poured because of the quadrants. Someone's bidding, someone's bidding, more people are bidding on the auctions. I can see you go. Thank you very much. You're supporting the channel as you're watching the channel. Hopefully you're watching too. But this very well might be the last swirl candle that Yankee Candle ever pours because, like I said, these do have to be made uh, with much more care and attention. And Trick or Treat, which was a swirl candle that was around for many years, was retired um, last year. Yeah, it didn't come back last year. It was, it was, it was 2016 it came out. It had the bats on it. Uh, so... I wanted to get this just in the case that this was the last swirl candle because I like swirl candles. I have a huge collection of swirl candles um, and I sold a few of them, which I wish I had, you know, that's the thing about having a collection and, and selling your stuff to fund a YouTube channel. You kind of regret it sometimes. I am right. <laughs> Violet Moon says no trick or treat. Uh, oh, no, she, she goes, no trick or treat is a knife in my heart. 
Uh, it says Violet Moon. Well, you know what? Sweet Seduction, I think, you know, it may not fill that gap in your heart, Violet Moon, but Sweet Seduction, I think it's something, right? I think it's a very well-made candle. It's candy corn, but it has that amped up buttercream that Trick or Treat had, but it's also got more. It's got, you know, it's got a little bit more of the complexities. Uh, I did actually have a chance to burn it last year. Uh, I mean, I was talking about it for months and months and months, so by the time I got it, I just felt like, okay, enough with Sweet Seduction. But I did get to burn it and enjoy it. Uh, all I ask is that Yankee Candle gives it a little bit, the aesthetics, the look of it, a little bit more nostalgia than last year. Last year, it looked like it was in like that cocktail glass, that martini glass with the frappe or some kind of weird thing. That's all good, but come on, man, like, Let's see some, let's see some candy. Let's see some, let's pull at our heartstrings. Let's get like a retro looking photo of like going out and trick or treating. You know, it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown style. You know what I'm talking about? So as long as they do that with sweet seduction, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. But candy corn uh, will not be coming back this year. If any of you guys are hoping for that. I think, I mean, that's just a given. I hope you guys um, probably figured that out on your, on your own. B -b 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 pumpkin Patch a long time ago. Pumpkin Patch was an awesome candle. Uh, pumpkin Patch was um, uh, harvest and spiced pumpkin. And it wasn't a swirl candle. It was like homogenized. It was one solid color. They may have made it a swirled candle once, but every time I bought it, it was homogenized. And uh, one of mine did break. A buttercream and chocolate chip cookie swirl. Oh, that sounds amazing, too. That sounds amazing, too. So, all right. Yeah, look at that. It just says swirl candle. That's all it says. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got to stay focused. This is a heavy one. This is a heavy one, and it comes from all the way uh, from, uh, I shouldn't say the name of the town. It, it comes from Colorado, so high high elevations, if, if it's in a higher elevation part of Colorado. There are lower elevation areas. I've never been to Colorado. I would love to go to Colorado. I, I think I've mentioned it many times. I'm a... Um, you know, uh, you guys know that I'm a big beverage person. Actually, how many people do you know have a degree in beverages? I have a degree in beverages. And I wanted to go to Colorado and do um, like two weeks of wine and beer tasting. Not like a bender, but like like a very studious tasting. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make that happen one of these days. We got two candles. Whoa, whoa. And they do appear to be Yankee candles. By the weight and the look. You guys excited about this? You should be, because I think I know what these are too. Yeah, the microbrews in Colorado. I mean, you could spend a lifetime, right? I haven't even looked at the label. I haven't even opened the jar. All I did was rip open this envelope, and I know what candle this is. That's a special thing. Let's take a, a, a pause, a break, and celebrate that for a minute, shall we? Because this candle, um, by the look of it, I can date this candle right off the bat, is a brand new, brand new uh, candle. It's never been lit, but it's from 2000... Rather late, late 2006 or 2007. Um, that is the only time. You see how this looks like a black band, but it's not, right? Um, there's no black bands that surround this candle. Uh, that was only, the candles only looked like this for a brief period of time in late 2006 and in 2007. And then from this, they went to what we know as the classic Yankee Candle label. And when they did that, they changed the label of uh, the, the whole image 
of this candle right here, home for the holidays. I can smell it. It's making me yearn. And this guy over there is going nuts right now. He's going nuts because he can smell it too. Uh, beautiful condition. And look at that. $21.99. $21.99. I'm not making a joke on the price rate raise from Yankee Candle. I'm just stating that this candle is over a decade old. And um, what are we talking? We're talking about less than $9 inflation. I support Yankee Candles this year. This year's going to do that. If they never put them on sale, then it'd be different. My God, this thing is... This has no, no, not even the slightest, the slightest morsel of an indication that there is age on this candle. And yes, there is age on this candle because we're talking about 11, 11, possibly 12 years old now. Look at that. Take a close look at that. And then look down here. You can see how the wax was different. You know, you don't get those little channels and canals of the wax back in those days. Rather that or through time, that somehow fixes itself. But this is a baking spice in the kitchen with my grandpa or Mikey's dad. My dad was the, 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 the cook and the baker of the family. You're in that kitchen for the holidays. People got the mulled spices, but there's that overwhelming warmth of amber, and more specifically cedar, that cedar, that dried firewood wood that's sitting on the hearth. <sighs> and this did not smell like my house. This smells like, um, this smells like one of those good old fashioned New England homes. That's why I really love this label. It's hard to see it. And there's not a lot of good pictures of this on, on um, like Google images. That's why I want to get these, uh, get great photos, do my, what I call uh, Yankee Candle archives, where I show these older candles and compare them with their contemporary counterparts. And uh, this way, you know, I'm, I'm documenting these, these things that, you know, and, and probably five years from now, or maybe even less, they just, are going to be long gone. People are eventually just going to throw these things out. And that's a shame because this is a treasure in, in my opinion. Um, I love it. I love it. You got the cool blue light from the outdoors of uh, the moonlight and then the warmth of the home. All of this yellow hues showing through the trees. We see the snow. We see the ice. Just the label alone is setting up the aromatic profile, the trees, this old New England home, being outside in the night, which is gonna give us this cooling sensation contrasted by the warmth of the house. Can you tell that I have a passion for this candle? I do, I do. Home for the holidays. Um, uh, this one might have to stay in my collection, but we'll see after I do my video on it. It could be yours. It could be yours. I think uh, just just as a testament that these candles can go for a small price and, and somebody come out and admit to it if you are the one who want it. Uh, Nancy says, does it smell like punch? It doesn't smell like punch. I mean, not the punch that I would drink. Not like, um, um, oh God, I'm forgetting the name of it. The, the returning favorite last year. Uh, I mean, I guess you could make a punch like this, but nah. I mean, it's more of um, the star anise, uh, the nutmeg, um, even like cardamom, like the, a lot of the exotic spices, mold spices. Um, has anyone, had, anyone ever had mold red wine before? It's very weird, um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful smell. Uh, so to me, it's a little bit more like that. If that is a part of like your tradition, holiday tradition, mulled red wine with spices, that is a candle that really is going to speak to you.
Yeah, Nancy says, I really like the label. It's my favorite label. Uh, you know, if you re if you don't can't remember what the label looks like now, it, now it has the teddy bear and all the toys, the wooden soldier. It used to be a bigger label, but now it's really thin. Um, sitting by the fire. That's what the current label looks like. And that's a, a gorgeous label as well. Uh, but before that, it looked like this. And then before this, it was kind of like a close-up of ornaments and garland on a Christmas tree, which looked pretty, but definitely, eh, you know, it was it was lacking. To me, this is it. I mean, this is classic. This is classic. To me, this could be the ultimate Yankee candle, maybe outside of balsam and cedar, but the reason why I think this one is going to be more classic than balsam and cedar is because it's got about... Nah, about 30 years on balsam, no, 20, 20, let's say 20 years on balsam and cedar. It's 20 years older. This is going to be another black band, unlit. I needed this to be a part of my collection, but also I've never done an appropriate evaluation on this scent, and that scent is going to be pumpkin, or excuse me, spiced pumpkin. Um... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, this is, this is one of the candles that when I was young, uh, would be burned in my house and other family members' houses, but I never really, you know, I didn't collect Yankee candles when I was a kid. Um, so all those candles are long gone, but I very, very, uh, very much remember Spice Pumpkin, Spice Pumpkin looking like this and, um, I'm not quite sure of the year that this was introduced. It probably dips back into the 70s when it was first introduced. Uh, but as far as Sal Deerfield, this did come in the country kitchen uh, jar uh, that dated back to 1983. This one is going to be uh, more of uh, 1995 to 2000. Um, I have to decipher. They showed me a Deerfield. The actual, uh, I don't think he'll mind me giving him a shout out. Jeffrey, who's been the stock manager for Yankee Candle for over 20 years, for 20 years, he uh, personally uh, showed me how to decipher taking the code and showing me uh, at least the year uh, when uh, these black band candles are burned. Because now you can simply look and they have like the year right there and then the special barcode. It's very simple, but in these days it was a little bit harder to decipher, and no one's been able to answer that question for me until Jeffrey sat me down and showed me. So, uh, but there it is. Uh, this and Harvest uh, have the in the black band form need to be a part of my collection. The question is, would you do this the same? Um, if you were a fan of Spice Pumpkin, Harvest, Balsam and Cedar, if you have a classic, uh, you know, Midsummer's Night, if there's one that's been around forever, uh, uh, Clean Cotton, um, um, what are, uh, I mean, I guess French, nah, I'm trying to think of what ones are people's, like, favorites, like, go-to, it's been a part of their lives for decades. I guess Witch's Brew, um, Witch's Brew only was released in a black band once, and good luck finding it. Um, um, but yeah, very cool. I actually bought these from the same buyer. That's always great, because you save on the shipping costs, right? Very cool, semi-annual sale. And then we'll get back to the boxes. I bought a lot of stuff from the semi-annual sale. I don't have it all here. Uh, I bought some things, some gifts, but this one you can thank Eric for, right there. I had to do it, guys. I had to do it. I got the mini Barney egg, and if you don't know the story behind the Barney egg, um, I, I really, I don't know if it's a story. But Yankee Candle, um, you'll see it every now and then it'll pop up. They have this guy, this little, this is like a, you know, a votive holder. You could put a tea light in here, but they make this guy or made it 
where it's like twice the size of my head. And the first time I saw it, I literally laughed out loud. Like I, I almost was like crying because I'm saying to myself, that is the most absurd piece of Yankee Candle accessories. And it looks like an egg. It looks like a dinosaur egg. You see the texture on it? Uh, excuse the condition of my fingernails. Um, but um, it has that reptilian egg look to it. So I was making fun of it and making jokes and po po poking jokes at it. And then I eventually bought the humongous Barney egg. And it turned out to be quite possibly um i'm trying to meet you that is my goal i'm trying to oh i'm trying to meet my goal i thought you said it was trying you, you you're trying to meet me and that was your goal uh uh okay so our vlogs can you please subscribe to me man leave a comment uh our vlogs and i'll certainly check out your channel and see what you're all about uh thanks so much for for joining in today but um uh, yeah, so it turned out that the massive version of this was one of the coolest. It's still, it's the coolest thing. You can put those LED twinkle lights in it. You can put um, uh, tea light trees inside of it. Uh, I showed, I can never remember the name of it, the Halloween bat wrought iron gate thing. D that decor that you can put inside of it and it looks cool. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, please, please list it there. But I have a small one now. I had to get it. Uh, it was $12.99, 75% off. How could you say no to that? Um, but if you are at Yankee Candle Village, they do have three, le well, it's a semi-annual sale. They could be gone by now, but they did have three. So thank you, Eric for convincing me to get that. Baby Barney. Sage and citrus says, uh, uh, marshmallow zap, Laura, but I don't know what that's in reference to. I need somebody to join me to read off these comments. I have a medium jar, uh, medium jar of mulled wine. It's really good, but would never burn. One to keep for Christmas display. Oh, would a Yankee Candle make? That's silly of me, because I, I probably knew that. Yeah. Oh, it's vill I see a village candle. No, no, Yankee Candle made a mold of wine candle. I'm seeing a passion for fragrance, but I'm also seeing it in an older votive. So it looked like it was in the US a while ago but has been poured for uh international sales uk yeah i'm seeing it here in a black band mulled wine that's one that's that i i haven't seen that in a while or i i've never i'm sure i've seen it at some point i've forgotten about it heavy 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 box let's go back to these comments here um, yes, uh, the German mold spice. Oh, God, can I pronounce it, Nancy? Uh, could you spell it phonetically? I, the, the worst thing about me and, 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 well, just the German language, but, you know, being a sommelier, I had to pronounce German wines, like Truckenbären Ausweise. Right. Um, that took me five years to learn how to say truck and bear and also let's say. And the thing is, you only have to use that word once or twice in a year. Uh, but the, the language is very hard for me and my, my, my tongue to, to be able to pronounce. Gluvine. Gluvine? Gluvine. Gluvine. Well, that's easy. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and Rachel goes, a lot of us would like to meet Shane, let's be honest. Well, that's so kind of you, Rachel. I would honestly, I think I want to meet you guys just as much as you probably want to meet me. Um, it's so great that we have, and I'm always forgetting to promote it. Rachel, a uh, long time ago now, started the Candle Enthusiast Facebook fan group. Long name, long name. But 
uh, it's something that she kind of said she took it on herself and like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this and she did it and now we, there's several uh, administrators who uh, who help out on a daily basis. It's a great place to really uh, bond with. For me, it's great because I get to like learn about you guys, but. For me to kind of see what you guys are talking about it helps me what is in this box it really helps me understand like what's going on with the candle world because i don't i'm not in a lot of facebook candle groups i may be a part of them but i don't check them often but like seeing you guys post like pictures of places you're going to or candles that you're purchasing that are not yankee candle or like especially when you're posting things like harry slatkin or uh, uh bath and body works and we paused are you guys still with me? Uh-oh. Okay, still with me? All right, there may have been... There may have been a problem there. I'm still trying to figure it out. It may have, it may have paused. Okay. But I was talking about the, the Facebook fan group. So uh, I, I, it's really upsetting that you, if you guys missed all of that. Um, uh, but really, uh, please, 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 if you're interested in not just the candle enthusiast, me and what I'm doing, but you want to have a very positive place to go to where you can talk uh, and share your passion really about anything, but mainly about candles and aromatics and travel destinations, things that are nostalgic, the Candle Enthusiast Facebook fan group, and I can't take any credit for it at all because uh, Rachel and the administrators really have turned it into something far beyond, far beyond what I could have imagined. This is awesome, what I'm holding right here. All right, so a lot of you know that I'm, in June, I'm going to be doing a blueberry Yankee Candle video. What I've done is I purchased every single Yankee Candle blueberry themed candle in the company's history that I'm aware of. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I do my research and I, I put a lot of work into it. And to my knowledge, I have every single uh, Yankee Candle blueberry themed candle. At least, I mean, if it's pictured or if it's named on the label, I have it. Right? There may be a lot of candles that have blueberry in it, but if it doesn't have blueberry in the title, it's not going to qualify. But the purpose is I am going to lay out all of these candles throughout Yankee Candle's history. And I'm going to compare them, contrast them, uh, and uh, describe how they're different. And uh, if, in, in, my, in my humble opinion, describe to you which one I think is most successful. Now, this candle I had, but it was in a tart. And... I'm like, come on, if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do this right. I gotta have it in a candle form. And the only way I could find it was in this three wick tumbler. Uh, this was a very, this is a, it's not a rarity, but it's not certainly one that you're gonna come by in retail. This is an outlet or, and or like home goods, Marshalls exclusive thing. It's called blueberry picking. And wow, is that aromatic and, um, I mean, my speculation is that this is not too different than Yankee Candle's Blueberry, the, their classic blueberry candle. But one way or the other, I had to get this for that video. So that video in June, I'm going to go blueberry picking. And I'm going to go to a blueberry farm. I'm going to talk to blueberry experts, if that's what they want to be called, blueberry farmers. Talk to them, share with them some of the Yankee Candle, blueberry candles. Get their opinions. What, what do they think uh, is most successful? And if there's any kind of special memories that those candles evoke to them, because maybe some of those blueberry farmers, it was in their family. So maybe it's generation of blueberry farmers. Uh, and uh, I figured that would be a, a good way to spread, spread, spread some blueberry happiness in June. Uh, but in order to do that video, I needed to get every blueberry Yankee candle. And there's a lot. I have a lot of blueberry candles in my collection. Um, it's like, it's getting ridiculous. In my office, blueberry. It just smells like blueberry. Um, I love it. 
but I gotta get this video made. Uh, if anybody knows, I think somebody, I think it was maybe Nicole was at a strawberry farm. Again, I'm not spying on you guys. You guys are posting these pictures, but you were at a strawberry farm. Uh, to my knowledge, blueberries go into, you know, harvesting for blueberries is late June or late July. Uh, the sooner I can do it, the sooner I can find a place where I can pick my own blueberries, uh, the sooner I'll make the video. So if you guys have any inside information uh, in the, in the tri-state area, or just say the New England area, please let me know because uh, I want to get that video made. I really do. This is a big box, but it's very light. Is Brary Bamble, Brary Bramble on the menu? Um, it's not, but I own it. So maybe I'll include it. Maybe I'll include it. It's a great question. It's a great question. Like Berrylicious. Berrylicious pictures blueberry. But really, I don't think Berrylicious, the main profile as far as blueberry is concerned, is blue. Whoa. I don't think the main berry on Berrylicious is blueberry. Does that make sense? And that's not Yankee Candle saying that. That's just my humble opinion. But Berrylicious will be a part of that video. What is in this box? Whatever it is, it's it's light. I'm, I'm thinking it's not a candle. Let's hope this isn't embarrassing. Like, how embarrassing would it be if I open this up and it was, I don't know. This is where I need Eric to come up with a joke. Something that was just embarrassing. Like something you'd not want to share on a live YouTube video. Fifty percent off, all for mom Mother's Day, at J.C. Penney's. Do you guys have a Mother's Day's done? Okay, okay. Christmas trees at Lowe's Black Friday. Black Friday. How old are these newspapers? And this says Black Friday. Uh, deals ninety nine cents on one quart poinsettias. And all of these Christmas trees are on sale. I'm sorry for going off on a tangent, but man, this is old. This is this is old newspaper. This eBay seller probably doesn't get all that much business if they have paper from last Thanksgiving. This appears to be a Yankee Candle shade. And, oh my God. Man, this is gonna hurt a lot of you guys. Not that it's, it's not broken, but when you see it, you're gonna want it. And I wish you could have it, but I'm not gonna give it to you. <laughs> it's not that I'm not gonna give it to you, but oh my, I mean, this is, this. What year was this made? Uh, if anybody knows who's joining us, this is back in the day when Yankee Candle did make the ceramic shades we have exclusively made for Yankee Candle on top. Uh, it's large, right? It's kind of, it's maybe it's hard to see how large it is, but look, I have this guy. He's a separate accessory. This little, this little, this little trick or treater. And in this bag, you put a tea light, 2005. Look at this, Laura comes through with the Yankee Candle history. We got a kitty pumpkin trick-or-treater. What do we got here? I can't see. Okay, we got, we got a skeleton dressed in a pumpkin costume carrying a lantern or trick-or-treat bag with the skull on it, with a top hat. And as we keep going, we got more, we got a mummy dressed as a pumpkin or is it a pumpkin dressed as a mummy so you, know, you, you you just don't know it's probably a pumpkin dressed as a, a, a mummy and then the witch inside of her little bag there's a little candy corn there's a little candy corn inside of her bag this is fully a uh, uh, three-dimensional it is glazed right there you see how it has that nice little sheen to it 
Um, and of course, because this is ceramic, no lights will come through, will shine through. But as far as, far as Halloween decor, man, oh man. I think I have a small one of these. It's like for a, uh, a small house warmer, but it's not it's not as big as this one. And I do, like I said, there was a, a separate accessory that was just this guy. Three-dimensional little figurine, and then in his bag you put a tea light. He's in my office. My office is off limits right now. My off limits, if you don't, uh, my, my off limits, my, my, my office is off limits because it's getting a facelift. I mentioned it once. Um, I was just getting tired of that. That space doesn't correspond with the joy that Yankee Candle delivers, in my opinion. So I want to make sure uh, that if we're going to be filming in the office, that I got a facelift. And I'm working on it make it a little bit more of a pleasing environment for us to hang out in. Uh, so we will be we will be talking about that in the near future. Um, okay, okay. So I'm gonna read some of your comments here. So throw in some comments if you have them. Uh, I love ceramic shades. Says Violet Moon. Diane just sa simply says, "Oh man, oh man." I hear you, Diane. Uh, and Nancy says, those are awesome. And then Laura says, maybe 2006. So 2005, 2006. Um, I think one thing we can say, one thing that'll help us out, 2017 was the 10 year anniversary of the Boney Bunch. And these guys predate the Boney Bunch. So I think Laura is correct in her assessment. Um, uh, that they, they, they had ceramic figurines that predate, predated the bunny bunch. These are kind of like the precursors to, uh, uh, the bunny bunch folks. And bony bunch guys, bony bunch. Will the bony bunch return? Now, a lot of people might have a heart attack when I say this, but is the Boney Bunch going to return for 2018? A lot of people have opinions on this. A lot of people have opinions. A lot of people claim to have facts. But let me tell you right now, I've talked to uh, very credible Yankee Candle people uh, who are in the know, and they simply cannot confirm. So... I just want to put that out there. That is something that I was worrying about last year. But because it was the 10-year anniversary, they did bring them back. But uh, every now and then I get a, a message, a comment saying, you know, make sure you update us on the, what's going on with Boney Bunch. And I kind of get nervous because I'm not sure. I have very, very, very conflicting uh, information. I've had, I've had a yes, a Boney Bunch. The Boney Bunch is coming back. And I've had many people saying nobody, not even um, uh, regional managers, would possibly know if uh, the Boney Bunch is coming back. And just a little inside information. Uh, in corporate, the headquarters of Yankee Candle, which is also in South Deer from Massachusetts, they have, and there's one in, 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 I don't know where it is in Europe, or in the United Kingdom, but I know I know they have one there. Um, there's what they have called a mock store, right? A lot of companies probably have this, where um, they, months or seasons in advance, they set up the displays. The companies try to decide how their products should be displayed so they could take photographs to eventually send to the individual retail stores how to decorate uh, for the items for that season. Laura probably knows a lot about this. But the mock store at headquarters is, is essentially kind of like under lockdown. Even 
I don't want to mention any specific uh, manager's names, but it sounds like the Halloween stuff is not even there yet. The Halloween stuff won't be on display in the mock store until uh, at the very earliest July. So there is really, unless you are a part of that boardroom meeting, everyone that everyone signs a disclosure shh, uh, for corporate, no one's really sure what is coming back. You know, I'm sure they go through a process where there's a lot of items. Some of the items do get sent, you know, they get the green light to be manufactured and made and some things are probably held back and not made. So, um, it's very hard at this point to determine what is coming out for Yankee Candle Halloween 2018. I have lots of very educated guesses. Go very educated. I would say very good educated guesses and speculation. But sadly at this point, nothing can be confirmed until that mock store goes up. Because once that mock store goes up, well, sadly, it's just the truth. That's when things start to leak. And... Um, so that's so, so that's that bony bunch 2018 question mark M my best guess is that we will see bony bunch for this year although i do think that yankee in the course of five years will face out bony bunch sadly but that may not be a bad thing that may not, may not be a bad thing Nicole says, now that's a job I'd like to have. I don't think you could keep them on while you were burning the candle just for display. Okay, that goes back. Oh, the jar toppers. Okay, yes. Yeah, jar toppers. Problem with jar toppers is I'm very OCD about keeping the, the lid on my jar if it's not lit. But I love the whole concept of jar toppers. You know, I have one that's made specifically for uh, fresh cut roses. I have a bunch that, I guess they're not made specifically for the a Halloween candle, but ones that work for Halloween candles. But I never really get a chance to use them because I need to put the original lid on there if I'm not burning it. I wish Yankee would do a candle called Haunted House with a spooky looking house. They need to make more creative Halloween candles, says Margaret Kay. I, I really, really uh, agree with you, Margaret. Haunted House, uh, they can't do Haunted Mansion. I think that would be dangerous uh, because of the Walt Disney Company. But yeah, you know, I think um, there's so many possibilities, right? Uh, as long as they keep it playful and kid-friendly... I've talked about this before. My fear is that Yankee Candle is trying to stay away from, um, I hate using these words. Um, they're trying to be politically correct. They're trying to be PC in that haunted might offend people. People, you know, I have a lot of close friends. I'm not even sure if I believe in paranormal activity, but if you're listing a candle called haunted and you're putting like cartoon characters on it, uh, in this day and age, you know, that might offend people. And, you know, um, just Halloween alone has the, the tendency to offend people. Uh, if you've noticed, I've talked about this before, but Witch's Brew, when's the last time you saw a witch on a Witch's Brew candle? You saw a witch hat in 2015, but before that, it was 2014. It was 2014 that you saw a witch on... Uh, um, a witch's brew candle. And the thing is, she was only a part of it. There was so many other things on the label. So I think the idea of having that character of, you know, the witch on the broom, they're trying to phase that out. Black magic, magic, and, you know, implying voodoo, or again, could possibly offend some people. That, that, that was swiped, uh, yeah, 2015, 2016, and that was taken away. Uh, really what we're left now with is, is for, you know, uh, toxic tonic was gotten to, that was wiped away clean, right? Tonic could, you know, imply toxic as in dangerous tonic implying, uh, medicinal in some way. Um, so I'm just afraid that Yankee Candle is afraid to go to go back to being 
okay with embracing Halloween and understanding that it is Halloween and that it's all it's all in good fun. That's my personal opinion. It, you know, it's um, and if you're wondering why Kringle Candle got rid of their Halloween candles, again, this is pure speculation on my part. But come on, why would you have four great Halloween? candles from Kringle Candle and then suddenly they're gone one year. They're gone. Not only were they gone, but they, they put them on clearance to get them out. Um, so I think because they're, they're just there might be a backlash uh, when you're trying to promote yourself like Kringle as they're kind of what, what I would call an affordable luxury candle company. Crinkle Candle is, if you guys, if anyone doesn't know, is a company that is uh, owned by the son of the founder of the Yankee Candle Company. And they, they fit in that category of, of luxury, but affordable luxury candle company. You know, they're, the, that's the bracket. Uh, but now that they have country candle, we might start seeing Halloween candles. There's been some speculation on that, and I hope that they, they do release some Halloween candles. Who knows? We might even see a re-release of Witch's Cauldron and Wolfsbane, uh, Kringle Corn, and Fright Night, but um, it, it won't be this year. It just, it just won't be because, um, there would, there would already be, uh, talks about it, unfortunately, but in the years to come, maybe keep spreading the Halloween love to all it matters. I do my best. I do my best. Um, Soon they will phase out Halloween altogether, says Shonda. And I don't disagree. I mean, I don't think it's just Yankee Candle, Shonda. I mean, I think that um, Halloween is just something that really is becoming nostalgia for a lot of people. And that's kind of, you know, and what, what, th what that means is that we if our if our nostalgia if if we are if we are yearning for Halloween more and more that's only because the traditions are falling away, and uh, I think that there's truth to that you know uh, you know and, and and just and just in twenty years the decline of what Halloween I maybe I shouldn't say decline but the direction the trajectory of the trajectory of what Halloween was to what it is today is so, so, so different. Um, so hopefully, hopefully Halloween won't be a thing of the past. I think it's important like companies like Yankee Candle, Walt Disney Company, to embrace these holidays and traditions, to remind people that it's okay. And that remembering that Halloween, it's not for adults, it's for kids. But we're children, We've, we were all at one point children, so we can all look back on it and have love and nostalgia for it and watch um, the new generation of kids enjoying it and then relive our youth by celebrating Halloween every year. But it's important for them to realize that Halloween is not a holiday for adults, it's for children doesn't mean adults can't love it because we do love it but we love it because we, we we grew to love it when we were children it's a children's holiday and as long as it remains safe and harmless and fun and it enhances you know the young ones it enhances their lives um, and gives them something to look forward to especially when you know um, you know, um, when arguably there's not a, a lot of things to, to celebrate throughout the year, um, you know, traditions, so to speak. So Halloween would, um, Halloween, I, I don't know. I think it's a very important holiday. That's my take. And we all have our opinions. So 
If, if anyone disagrees, I, I truly, truly respect everyone's opinion on the situation. Uh, Rachel says, yes, Nancy, you, uh, you make the candles and I'll take some picks and Salem for you to use on the label. So it looks like uh, Nancy and Rachel are up to some candle production, which is very cool. You guys should really do it. I always went trick-or-treating with my daughter. Yeah, right? Uh, if I had a daughter or... God, if I even had, uh, like, nephews or nieces or younger cousins, I would take them. I just remain... I remain to be the youngest. I remain to be the baby of the family. There is no one younger than me in my family. Um, at least not yet. I take off of work for Halloween. Good for you, Nicole. Good for you. We had 1,500 trick-or-treaters. We do a big production at the house every year, says Trisha. I believe it. Trisha, uh, from, from our brief conversations, I, I know that she's all, about, she's all about Halloween goodness. 1,500 trick-or-treaters. In recent years, I go to spend time with my parents for Halloween and we try as a family unit to all get together for Halloween uh, to visit the our parents house the house that my brothers and I grew up in and and when we were kids the neighborhood that we lived in was the hot spot it was it was a neighborhood it was safe because it it was you know it was just a it was a it was a branch you know it was a dead end but it was a long neighborhood, big hill, houses everywhere. And it really was like a block party. You know, lights all over the place. You know, the, you know, no cars were really moving around. You know, the parents had their vans parked. So kids, you know, they could transport the kids. But really, it was just, it was like a huge parade, a mob of children. And it was, it was the hotspot for My, my, my folks and my brothers for Halloween. We sit outside, we, we barbecue, we have a little bonfire, and we play Halloween music, we play some, some spooky movies. Um, uh, but what used to be this very large parade, mob of kids, has turned into maybe, maybe 15 trick-or-treaters and by trick-or-treaters I mean like a mom dad or dad or just mom uh, taking their young one you know um, to to go to the house to get candy you know no no eight-year-olds nine-year-olds teenagers I mean I, I probably the last time I went trick-or-treating I was probably I, I was probably 14 I won't lie that's just what happened it's like what happened uh, Travis says, fun times. Yeah, fun times, right? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I have, I have full faith that now, now, there may have been this little period. Crows, ravens. Quote the raven evermore. Um, In my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore um i think we maybe had this little gap but now that um i think that people who find those good old days of halloween are having their own families and they're coming of age hopefully halloween will grow a little bit more and it seems like trisha doesn't have a problem she's got 1500 trick-or-treaters certainly no problem no problem with Halloween in her neck of the woods. Gotta get some more water in this mug. Uh, I went till I was about 18, Anne-Marie says, but that was, uh, wasn't so unusual where I grew up. That sounds awesome. I mean, as long as kids are behaving, right? Oh, and I should mention this. 
Oh, Eric. Only Eric would say this. Me and my friends dressed up as the eyes wide shut party goers. How old were you? Well, I guess that was a long time ago, Eric. <laughs> but, come on. Dressed up as the masquerade. Did you dress up with the one with the, the feather? The feather on the head? Or the one with the... <sighs> Only Eric. Eric, yes, share this. Well, maybe not share the pics here. Not that you could, but I would love to see this. Um, eyes wide shut. Um, all right, so big topic. Since we're talking about Halloween, um, and this is a, a perfect opportunity for a Q&A sec uh, s s section or session. If you want to throw in anything that's not Halloween here, because I'm going to go, we're going to stay in this Halloween tangent for a second. So yesterday marked, was it yesterday? No, it was two days ago. Marked the day of um, uh, the new reboot, if you want to call it that. It's not really a reboot. Uh, John Carpenter's, the sequel of John Carpenter's classic 1978 Halloween. Um, so as we know, Halloween spawned, that franchise spawned eight sequels, or not eight sequels, but a total of eight films. Then there was the Rob Zombie reboots, one and two. And then now, uh, we have not a reboot, but check this out. This film, if you don't already know, takes every single sequel every halloween movie that's ever been made other than the original 78 classic and throws it out the window this new movie with executive producer john carpenter which doesn't happen often and he, you know and in, in his words he does kind of stand behind this one he's not just in it for the paycheck uh this is a legitimate sequel to the original classic so if you saw halloween 2 when jamie lee curtis is in the hospital right and michael myers comes in and and dr loomis is on a rampage trying to find him and and jamie lee curtis has the injured foot and she's hobbling around in that ridiculous wig that she has on throughout the entire movie and then michael myers gets his eyes shot out at the end of the movie and lit on fire and dr loomis is supposedly killed but then comes back in halloween 4 uh, all of that never happened. That is the story. None of that has ever happened. Um, uh, so after, in, in the first Halloween, it's hard to remember this. In the, the original Halloween, it was never established that Jamie Lee Curtis or Laurie Strode was Michael Myers, Michael Myers' brother. I had to explain that to my father because we have, we have it so ingrained in our head. Wait a minute. Jamie Lee Curtis or Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, the, the brother and sister. No, 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 no. In the first film, that was never established. Nowhere, nowhere was that in the plot of the original screenplay. It was the second film that established that family relationship. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. This film takes place roughly, not roughly, 40 years later. Uh, Michael Myers uh, has been locked up apparently in that insane asylum after the night in question not the night in question but the night he was shot by dr loomis and disappeared uh he was taken in that night and locked in a madhouse and 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 if you haven't seen the trailer it's available online uh i would check it out uh it's a very sensitive topic with me i'm surprised no one's mentioned it my thoughts on it i think the trailer is fun to watch i think the idea is fun to watch I think some of the choices are, are great. I think seeing Jamie Lee Curtis portrayed the way she is in the trailer and this new one compared to the way she was portrayed in H2O, which was technically Halloween 7 back in 1998. Uh, wasn't a fan of that. So I am of... I know a lot of people are excited about the new Halloween film, but I am... I just don't... Halloween to me is very special. It's very special and I'd, I'd like to keep it untouched. It's fun. It was fun for me to watch the trailer, but I do find it hard to believe that any film at this point um, would serve as um, 
I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Because I, I know, I know, I know, I know Laura, for example. Laura, I don't think she's here, but she's highly anticipating the movie. And um, so I'll let it. I'll let it be. I think the mask looks kind of cool. Um, I think there's still. I, I'm not sure if they answered if Nick Castle, who played Michael Myers for 99.9% .9 of the, the film in the original, is playing. Is he playing Michael Myers in the new one? I don't think he is. But I know there was rumors about that. Uh, John Carpenter is doing the music, but it's still unclear whether it's just a reorchestration or recomposition of the original score or if there will be new music. So that's that. What are your guys' thoughts? Have you watched the Halloween trailer? What are your thoughts? Or if you have any other questions uh, before we close up this live chat, uh, live smell it Sunday, th throw it at me. Throw it at me. Look at that. Look at that mug. Look at that mug. It's, it, it, honestly, if you've never had a mug that is inspired by you, I recommend it. Make, make a mug that's inspired by yourself. It's, it's a very special feeling. Um, Eric says, I won't watch the trailer because I won't, uh, I don't want expectations. So that means you're just going to wait for the film. Some, uh, I, I get that. I get that. I get that a lot, actually. I think if I wasn't, if I was really excited about the movie, I wouldn't have watched the trailer. But the truth is I probably won't see the movie when it comes out. At least not right away. Uh... Yeah, he is old. Uh, he is sort of adorable when he dances, his little old man dance to his own music. What are we talking about? Oh, 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 oh. I don't know about the dancing part. I'm, I'm, I'm confused, but uh, Hubble Kitty is talking about the John Carpenter's The Lost Themes. Yeah, there's some good tracks on there. Uh, I, I do, not recently, um, but I used to run, when an album came out, I, I, that was like the best running album ever, run on the treadmill to that music. Uh, I get really scared when watching Halloween movies. I prefer Hocus Pocus. Well, there you go. There's nothing wrong with that. And speaking of sequels, come on, people, come on. I don't know, but... Bette Midler right now doesn't seem to be doing anything. Thor Birch doesn't seem to be doing anything. Sarah Jessica Parker doesn't seem to be tied down to anything specifically. And I for unfortunately forget the third actress's name, but she's she pops up every now and then, but I don't think she's tied down to any major contracts. Why? And then Yankee, or not Yankee, uh, Disney is like re reintroducing the characters. The film was released as a Touchstone Pictures film. Touchstone Films was a way of Disney hiding the fact that it was a Disney movie. They didn't want to put Disney on it when it first came out because it dealt with witches. Again, politically correct thing. But now that it's a family favorite, they, they are happy to put Disney all over it. And then the witches appear uh, for Mickey's Not So Scary Party, uh, uh, for Halloween. Why don't they bring back the original cast, go back to Salem? I'm sure Salem would love the, that attention. That would draw a lot of tours, tourism um, if, if, if Salem's still happy with tourism. Um, uh, make a sequel of that. I don't think that would really offend. I mean, that, I mean, when you're dealing with something like Halloween, where you're talking about like, a classic film, in my opinion, not just a great horror film, but in my opinion, I think just a fantastic example of a near-perfect film. You know, you're free to touch it, but when you're talking about a fun movie like Hocus Pocus, make a sequel. I think they're bringing Hocus Pocus back. The, the Disney Channel is bringing it back as like a television series with a whole new cast, which maybe makes more sense. They'll make more money um, with that in the long run, but... I don't know. I just it's weird to see like you got the whole original cast 
essentially not wrapped up in any kind of big projects, you know, like a, like a sitcom or a drama television show, anything where they would have to really make time out of their life to work on a project. Anyway, I'll get off that. Uh, yes, there is water in this mug, coffee. I, I do have co a coffee. There's nothing wrong with it. I just... If anyone doesn't know, I'm a coffee fiend. I'm a fiend for coffee, or at least I used to be. And then I stopped, and I found out that I really wasn't addicted at all. And that it was really more of just a part of my day-to-day -day routine. So... I still drink coffee, but I don't just drink it. I find that drinking water, replacing some of the coffee with water throughout the day makes a whole lot more sense. As long as I don't need the coffee. I'll drink about, I'll drink, a, I'll drink about eight ounces in the morning. Um, but really, that's it. Or if I'm like hanging out with some friends, you know, I'll go to Starbucks and get a coffee. But I used to do like the Venti's. I can't imagine drinking a venti Starbucks right now. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, man, I really wish I could decipher some of these questions because a lot of you guys are having like independent conversations. Does anyone remember The Omen? Oh, of course. The Omen, unfortunately, is one of those movies that, it, you know, is terrifying. Um, no question. But you wonder if how well ha it has aged. Like, I wonder if a child uh, today, the age of the age I was when I first saw The Omen would be as scared. I, I did see it pretty young. My family, I have to say, you know, I, have to, I mean, blame my father or thank my father. I don't know which one to do, but he really didn't have a problem sharing horror films, spooky films with us uh, when we were young. Uh, so I did see a lot of, I think I saw Halloween the first time was probably like three, uh, but uh, the omen's pretty, pretty creepy, but like I can see, uh, you know, a group of teenagers seeing The Omen today and kind of just laughing at it because it, the language of cinema has changed enough where some of the techniques that Richard Donner, the director, uh, haven't really, st they're not timeless, you know? Uh, the quick zooms or the Jerry Goldsmith you know, the stings, the, the music cues, right? Um, um, they don't work the same way that they used to. Um, but to me, that, that film will always be just dreadfully terrifying. Just terrifying. And I just don't think... They made a, a, a remake of it. I, I wouldn't see that. Um, I haven't seen it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but... I still said they would never make a movie like The Omen today, the way that movie ended. Same thing with, like, <clears throat> excuse me, John Carpenter's The Thing. You just, you don't, you would never see a studio film made with those somber endings the way they were made back in those days, which is very unfortunate because you take movies like The Conjuring, which I thought was very well made, and... I thoroughly enjoyed it. I saw it on Hollywood Boulevard. Actually, Sunset Boulevard. Right there in, uh, in Hollywood, of course. Uh, and the art-like theater. And it was a press screening. So, like, the sound was perfect. Like, because if it's for the press, they want to make sure everything is perfect. And the screen was huge. I was, like, sitting in the front row. And it was just terrifying. But the ending i don't want to spoil it for anything i just don't feel like the ending needed to be as happy <laughs> or explained um you know what i mean even halloween the original halloween it leaves a question in the air i don't think people would deal with that today 
ba, ba, ba. Uh, and, and in contrast with that, I think um, The Exorcist, for example, um, William Friedkin's The Exorcist, that, um, that would, I think that stands a test, the test of time much better than The Omen. I, I wanted to say that when I was talking about The Omen. And we're talking about the witch now. The witch was fun, wasn't it? Not the way it was promoted, but the, the actual film. And what's that director working on right now? That director is working on the remake of Suspiria. Um, am I right about that? Uh, Dario Argento's Suspiria, the great Italian film. Um, Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but I mean, that director, young, young guy, uh, who did The Witch, but obviously has a good head in his shoulders. Evil Dead, the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, roughly translated, Book of the Dead. Bound in human flesh and inked in blood. Yes, Evil Dead is certainly a favorite of mine ever since I was a young kid and stole the copy, the VHS, out of my father's collection of movies and watched it all by myself. Elsa has grown. So Elsa, excuse the haircut, her hair is still coming in. Don't make fun of her. She's self-conscious. But her, the length, I'm going to hold her up. She hates it when I do this. Now hold her up. Come on. Come on. The length of her is so much longer, but like the sides of her head is the same. It's the same. Look at the camera. Um, but yeah, she's, she's definitely stronger and she's definitely longer. And man, can she, she can jump. She's an acrobatic at heart. Let me tell you. Hellraiser series. Uh, Doug Bradley, the guy who played uh, Pinhead. 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 Did he have another name other than Pinhead? I don't think he did. Uh, but Doug Bradley, um, I met him a f several times when I was younger. Really nice guy. Um, but I really only thoroughly remember the first Hellraiser. She is a shoulder pup, precious Elsa. It's so nice to, to share her again with you guys. Like I said, she had to take a hiatus because of her um, uh, of her haircut. You have a huge and beautiful garden behind. Uh, can you see the garden? Yeah, see so right there. We have a a little cottage here, which. Um, uh, I was about to... There's plans for this cottage. But I can't quite share that right now. Um, it's going to be a secret. And then behind it is a garden. And uh, it's pretty long. It runs the length here of the whole cottage. And then on the back side of the cottage, uh, I'm building a, a little porch. So you can sit outside and well, one water the garden while you're sitting on the porch but have people over so have to be a little more comfortable uh the problem is the sun exposure is not the greatest um because uh this is where the sun sets to the west right and there's a lot of pine trees here lots of pine trees so just have to work on figuring out a way um this strip can efficiently get more sunlight. Um, you know, it's funny because, you know, if I was growing grapes, I'd be happy that I had restricted sunlight. But since you grow tomatoes, cucumbers out there, you want a little bit more sunlight. What a stunning property. It's beautiful. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, this is... Um, this, you know, as much as I love to be on the road and much as I love to travel and see new places, uh, 
I, I need a place. I need a home base. I need a place where I can disconnect and work, but also play. Um, you know, when it's time to work, discipline yourself, and then, but also leaving time to play. But then, when I when I when I hit the road, it really is. It's like this this feeling of con reconnecting. It's reconnecting and and going off, and uh, I just I, I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. This living situation that I have now is so much better than years I spent living with roommates um you know being in really cool areas like brooklyn um uh short stint in Ma uh, massachusetts uh manhattan uh los angeles uh napa valley you know great places to live you know because there's so much stuff to do around you um and you don't need, in some cases you don't even need a car you can just walk to where you're going but the living situation of having you know, I'm in my 30s now. I can't, I can't be having roommates throwing parties to all hours of the night. You think when, you know, <laughs> you think when you get older, not to say anything bad about my friends who are watching now, my dear friends who live with me, roommates. But you think as we get older, you know, the, you know, the parties would stop, the late nights would end. Um, but, you know, I, I got to a point where I was I was in my late twenties and I was living like I was in my my late teens, and I just I, I I couldn't do it anymore. So living in the country, although I have to get in the car and travel quite a bit to 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 go places, uh, this is a little bit more suitable for me. It's a little bit more suitable for me. Plus, I'm in a great area because I can be in New York City, I can be in Massachusetts, I can be in Connecticut, I can be in Pennsylvania. Uh, I could be in New Jersey, uh, all un within an hour, an hour, we'll say 90 minutes. Um, so I'm in a really, really good spot. You should live where you feel the happiest, Nancy says. Yeah, um... I, 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 well, I, I agree. I mean, I, I just, I, the thing is, could I just exclusively be at this, my home base all the time? I think that was my fear of like living in the country. I couldn't do it because I'd get to, I'd get like cabin fever, even though I never get cabin fever. You know, I just, I like being around cities, but I figure like, well, wait a minute. If I split up my time, which I hope is the future of the candle enthusiast, where I can split up my time um, traveling, filming, uh, being on the road, exploring, going places that I've been to before, going to places I've never been to before, going to places you guys send me. Traveling, traveling, tra this is this is my goal. I mean, it's a long-term goal for the candle enthusiast, but spending half of my time on the road, but then having a home base to come to where I can disconnect and edit, because um, that's a crucial part about, crucial part of video production is you need, you know, 75% of your time um, is post-production and pre-production, getting ready for what you're about to make and finishing what you've already filmed. Uh, takes a lot, a lot of time, if anyone is not familiar with video production. Travis says, I take off an RV and I go for a month. Uh, I go for a month sometimes. Doing it Adam the Woo style. Adam the Woo, man. I was waiting for the day Adam the Woo would get an RV. Adam the Woo is a fantastic YouTuber, in my opinion. Uh, I've supported him for years. I think he's hilarious. I uh, actually got to talk to the man over the phone. <laughs> Finally. My brother is actually buddy-buddy with him now in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, that's what he does. You know, he, he kind of moves around the country. He lived in Anaheim. He lives in he lives in Hollywood now, but he's got an RV, so he can just book it for like a month at a time and just travel the country and go places and film things, 
and Adam is a huge inspiration to me. I mean, he, I love what he does because he films places where the Travel Channel, for example, would never go. Um, he goes to restaurants where uh, the Travel Channel would, would never highlight. He goes to monuments and museums. And these are the little tokens and gems that are spread throughout the country. I think Adam gave me a whole new respect for the idea of traveling nationally. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, all, all those years ago when I started watching him, like him just kind of firsthand showing us all of the amazing things that are in uh, the U.S. and you don't have to necessarily travel abroad to see amazing things. Not to say that I wouldn't want to travel abroad. I always see him in Tim Tracker vlogs. I love Tim Tracker. Tim Tracker is another um, uh, great, great vlogger uh, based in Orlando, Florida. So he does a lot of the Disney parks, the Universal parks, um, just theme parks in general. Uh, him and his uh, his wife Jen, uh, fantastic, fantastic um, uh, vloggers. Really good documentarians, and not in a a film way but just you know they 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 document all of this stuff that people want to see that perhaps they will never ever, ever get to see and um, they were just in Los Angeles and if they go back I would love the opportunity to to meet up with with Tim and Jen and, and maybe Adam together uh, th through my brother of course my brother's got all the connections and can I say this? Who, raise of hands, raise of hands before, uh, uh, thank you for hanging out. We're just hanging out here. Hope you guys don't mind. Um, when I'm on the second channel, I'm in no rush to leave. Um, who's familiar with I Justine? Now, I know a lot of people, um, you know, she's a YouTuber that you could probably be turned off r r right off the bat. Um, high energy blonde a lot of people can make assumptions but as it turns out she's uh you know she may she may portray herself that but she's incredibly intelligent she's a fantastic documentarian filmmaker editor uh and she's a workaholic uh show of hands so harry's showing a hand uh she does all types of d different vlogs well I told you, I think it's fair for me to say it now, I told you a while ago, my brother's new movie, which is called A Fairy Tale After All, my brother is known for making R-rated material. They're all R-rated films, uh, uh, but he, his, his, his newest project is a, is a project that has really, I think, been in his heart since he was a child. We just, together, we needed to, get, I needed to convince him to, to do it. And uh, one day he kind of just told me, he's like, I'm, I'm doing this, this movie. It's going to be called A Fairy Tale After All. He wrote the screenplay. He's been in post-production for over a year now. And if anyone's familiar with Brian Hull, who's a voice actor and a very big YouTuber, um, he uh, is uh, going to be a, uh, an integral part of the film. He's going to be one of the characters, the voice actors. But... Justine Azeric. See if I can spell her last name. Azeric. Um, who is I Justine? She uh, she she's gonna be in the film. She's going to be in the film. So what's happening is uh, my brother's had theatrical. All three of his films had theatrical releases, but you know times are changing, and he's taking this YouTube approach. Um, not to say that the film won't have a theatrical release, but you know, he's kind of looking at it, uh, what if we make a movie, instead of trying to get it theatrical, try to get it out there on a different platform. Maybe that platform being YouTube, we're a long time away from that. But by doing so, um, he's getting a lot of YouTube personalities involved, including himself. Hopefully, I you know I will be there documenting with my aromatic adventures. I will be working on the film when uh, the time comes, uh, when it goes into production. Uh, you guys will be coming along um, uh, to see that whole process. But this is great. I mean, we're talking about a really fun 
live action, mixed media, puppets, animation, also fairy tale movie that is for for it's completely family friendly, uh, but um, mixes the 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 joy of Jim Henson and Walt Disney and Rankin and Bass, you know, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman, all of uh, and even like Tim Burton, right? Even though my brother, um, well, I think Tim Burton was inspired by Walt Disney and you know. Uh, all you know, Jim Henson, all the people I mentioned as well, but trying to really bring all of the inspirations, even things like Pee Wee's Playhouse when we were kids, trying to get all of this nostalgia and create uh, a really fun, beautiful story uh, uh, about about a princess, a, a, a woman in distress, you know, a damsel in distress. And uh, I just, I think it's just a wonderful idea. So make sure you check out that film, uh, A Fairy Tale After All, on imdb.com. It's uh, listed, um, it's official, uh, hopefully production. Um, it, production has already begun, but filming, because only the voices have been done so far. Hopefully the filming will starts later this year or at the very latest early next year and like i said i will be i'll be there documenting the whole whole experience how great is that the guys gonna get behind the scenes look of uh making making a motion picture hopefully you guys want to see that And I'm just going through my head and making sure that I didn't give away anything, any spoilers I wasn't supposed to. I don't think I did. Uh, sounds awesome. I would like to see a Man in Distress movie soon. Um, yeah. Um, what's kind of funny that you mentioned that is that there's a, there's a principal male character in this film, too. So it's not the classic... I think a good example would be like Tangled, right? You have Rapunzel, but then you have Flynn. The two, there's two principal characters in the film. So I won't say anything more than that, but uh, the film does... It's not like Cinderella and some very uh, basic prince. Um, uh, not even suggesting that it's a prince in the begin in the first place, but... Um, there is uh, there there are some uh, other principal characters. Very cool. So, any other questions? I've made a mess here, and Elsa's getting hungry. Let me show this one more time. Did anybody miss this? This is one I'm I'm this is I'm most excited about. Um. Look at that. Look at that label. Oh, okay. And Laura's asking a good question. Um, did you get any Kringle info on your trip? Anything on unicorn poop? Uh, they don't have it on the, the shelf, at least when I was there. So that was kind of the decision maker for me. My choice uh, when I was in Deerfield was to go to Kringle Candle for the day or to go to Holyoke and shoot the birthplace of Yankee Candle Village. And if you haven't, or Yankee Candle, excuse me. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's not a video that's going to get a lot of hits and views. Um, so I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm just hoping that uh, people f stumble upon it and find it. Um, because I think it's just important that nobody talks about the history of Yankee Candle and really if, if it comes down to it if nobody else is a gonna be a self-proclaimed Yankee Candle historian I'm just gonna have to do it myself um, but um, uh, but I will I, uh, I as soon as all of us get information about the unicorn poop um, I just still think that it's it's still far into production I think we'll we'll probably see another email before it's actually released on the shelves. 
Margaret K says, I love the video on the first ever Yankee Candle factory. Love the history of it all. It's so fascinating. Yeah, you know, I think that we're so... We look at Yankee Candle, the company, as this godly-like thing, right? Yankee Candle. There's no, there's no face to place with Yankee Candle. Walt Disney, or excuse me, you know, um, the Disney Company or the Walt Disney Company, of course, we know, we know the man behind the magic, Walt, right? But Yankee Candle has that face. But unfortunately, a lot of Yankee Candle fans, um, uh, including myself, don't don't really have any knowledge of how the company evolved and how it became what it became. And, and there's a lot of things that happened uh, throughout the years. And Michael Kittrich really uh, was the man uh, who, who started it all. Uh, looked like there was a lot of trial and error when it first started. Like, the company wasn't quite sure what it was going to be. Uh, and I think uh, Sal Deerfield opened, opened their arms to Yankee Candle and Michael Kittredge. And uh, allowing him to build the factory, knowing that it would create tons of jobs. And the village would create tourism and jobs as well. And... Um, so I think it was that move from Holyoke to, to, to Deerfield, which totally makes sense to me now. That really is what made Yankee Candle explode. And then, of course, uh, Michael Kittredge got very, very ill in the early 90s. And that was the first time Yankee Candle really kind of had to be partially sold um, to a larger conglomerate. Uh, Kittredge stood... Uh, within the company's boundaries for decades after, but it wasn't his, it wasn't his, uh, like, startup project. It wasn't his baby project anymore. And, um, and then as most of us know, uh, uh, in 2010, uh, Michael Kittredge has really left his legacy of Yankee Candle and the whole idea behind, and we saw Michael Kittredge the third. So Michael's son uh, opened up Kringle Candle in uh, Bernardston, Massachusetts, which is only about fifteen minute drive, a fifteen minute drive away, and uh, or, or slowly, not slowly, very quickly, kind of recreating um, that smaller but still international big production, but it still has a small feel Kringle Candle. Uh, they have the luxury line, which, I, like I said, is the Kringle. Now they have the country candle, which is a little, it is a lot. It's very Yankee candle forward. It comes in the apothecary jar. It has the same uh, sh uh, photo shape. It's got, it, it's almost identical. If you haven't seen a country candle label, it's got two wicks and it's paraffin. It is colored wax as well. Um, but, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that not only about documenting the history of Yankee Candle, but documenting the history of Michael Kittredge is very important because we might take it for granted now, but the idea of, if you go back to the 70s, the idea of taking a scented candle, a candle that simply smells like an apple. Okay, cool, that's cool, I'll buy that, right? But then taking that concept of a scented candle and tying it to nostalgia and your memories... Instead of, instead of just smelling an apple now, again, we're in the 70s and we're smelling scented candles and someone hands you a candle and instead of it just smelling like an apple, you smell it and you don't smell an apple, but suddenly you smell a memory and it takes you to a very specific place in your life that is bookmarked, it's earmarked. Uh, in the story of your life and it's very special and that a fact that a candle a little jar and with a little sniff it could take you right back to that very special place in your life I, that was an ingenious idea back in those days I wasn't around those days to testify for that but I think that was what made Yankee Candle, Yankee Candle, and the, the scented candle industry, 
really, to me, hasn't changed. Uh, I think everyone in some form or another, every every candle company out there is trying to be Yankee Candle. So they could say is, is all the bad things they want about Yankee Candle, Yankee Candle this, Yankee Candle that. Yankee Candle is not a company so much as it is an idea. It was an idea of aroma, nostalgia, memories, you know, that, 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 that special place inside, whether it be here or here, that you go to, to feel good. Uh, that's why Yankee Candle's important. Uh, that's why scented candles are important. And, um, and if we kind of forget this concept and candle companies start becoming, you know, the cologne, comp like similar to cologne and perfumes, you know, you lose that feel good feeling or you lose that nostalgia. You, you, you lose that, you lose the imagery when you smell the candle. If candle companies start becoming this um, and getting away from the emotions and the stories and the paintings, internal paintings, then I don't see the candle industry having uh, longevity. What you're going to see is increasing prices or decreasing prices and higher production. Um, candles that are just going to be recycled. There's only so many times you can put out baking spices and recycle this fragrance, let's put a new package on it, just recycle the same old thing. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. It's not what it's all about. It's about striking a feeling. It's about igniting that excitement. Um, and I, I don't know how else to say it. I wish I was more of a poet and I could put it in a way where it, it uh, would make a little bit more sense. But um, that is where I hope the candle industry is going. Um, you know, people, I'll use, I'll use Liz because I love using Liz from Witch City Wix. She has a very, very definitive book of ideas in her head. A library, I should say, of ideas in her head. And they're stories. Whether they're stories or the pictures Liz and I have debated, she's not quite sure if she wants to call them stories or so on and so forth but whatever they are there's things that she needs to express and she's doing it through the the art form of candles and when i smell her candles we're we're making a connection liz and i are making a connection i understand she's 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 showing me something and um if the candle industry can keep pushing the envelope with this concept um going for emotions uh um and looking at it as a more as an art form. I think there's a beautiful history for the candle industry. I think there's a beautiful, beautiful uh, history. Um, and uh, I, I, hope, I hope, hope to be a part of that. I hope to be a part of this movement in just a little bit, you know, in, in, this, in, in, in any way I can. I'll take it in any way I can. Um, that was a very large tangent. Um, everything in moderation. Okay, we're seeing a lot of candle geek talk, which I promote. I am a poet. Uh, the candle enthusiast community self-proclaimed, of course. What pops to mind first is that somehow plant waxes, you guys are talking about soot is what you're talking about. Um, yes, I think like anything else, um, as, as an industry gets bigger and as time goes on and we strive to be healthier and science makes leaps um, uh, makes advances. Um, yeah, we should be, we should be, I mean, maybe this candle smells so fantastic, even though it's, 
a couple decades old, maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe it's because there's something in here that's making it smell so good that makes it not healthy to burn. However, the way I always see it is, unless you're burning a candle every day, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are, myself included, unless you're burning a candle every day, um, maybe I shouldn't be talking about this because I, I don't want to get into any kind of argument, but like I used to live... I lived in Brooklyn, New York for two years. I love Brooklyn. But, like, my the, right outside of my window was a bus stop. So while I was sleeping, I'd have the window open, and every morning I'm sitting there as a college student just breathing in exhaust fumes from this bus stop every morning. And I'm thinking, like, well, okay, so there's most likely some harmful things in these candles, but one spending one day in Brooklyn or one day in a city, it's got to be much more dangerous to your system than uh, burning a candle once a week. However, if you're burning candles nonstop, you know, it's, I, I, I understand, you know, uh, other wax alternatives is, is certainly necessary. However, that doesn't mean, uh, I, I could, one day maybe I'll change my mind, but uh, I'm still a supporter of paraffin wax. I, I enjoy it. Uh, I like the fact that it's a harder wax. Um, it, it, it protects the fragrance oils. Uh, I think it, it, this is a testament right here that it can preserve the fragrance oils inside to make it last a long time. Where I don't know, I don't know with uh, these other other waxes. Maybe they're better for immediate immediate burning. It's kind of like wine, right? Everything always goes back to wine. It's like you can buy. People always ask, what, is there is it important to have a really good cork on a bottle of wine? Because corks these days are very expensive. High quality corks can cost over a dollar per bottle, and that's a lot of money if you're producing wine. And people always say, like, are synthetic corks okay? Well, and I, I guess you can make the comparison between um, different kinds of wax, you know, um, high-quality cork versus a low-quality cork. Depends on when you're going to drink that wine. If you're going to go to the store, you know, statistics say in many different, in many different uh, avenues, statistics say that 85% of wine that's purchased is consumed within 48 hours so in that case why are we spending why is the wine industry spending so much money on high quality authentic cork when they could be using synthetic corks um or screw caps because screw caps the technology of screw caps have, has really made leaps and bounds However, if you're purchasing a bottle of wine with the intention of laying it down or aging it for 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 plus years, it's going to be worth spending, a, you know, that extra dollar to put that high quality cork in there. So um, I guess the same thing could be said. Um, I, look, I scared Rachel away by talking about getting off topic. Heading out. Have a great, great night, everyone. Bye, Rachel. Um, um, but the, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're planning on building a collection, to me, I feel like paraffin has proved itself to really be, um, something that can stand the test of time over a long period, over a long, long period of time. As you know, I, in my collection, oldest candle, Yankee candle I have is, um, over 35 years old. And it's paraffin. It smells great. Blueberry. And look at this. Uh, marshmallow Zeps. Yeah, I love this. Um, Laura goes, Yankee Candle Company, 100% grade A paraffin wax. That's food grade. So um, I would love to see somebody. Here's something that I probably won't be able to do. But I would love to see. People are always saying, how can other people produce candle content on YouTube other than reviews. There's so much content that could be produced on YouTube about, Yang or not just Yankee Candles, but candles other than evaluations. You know, I didn't get into this to, to do evaluations. I, I really enjoy doing evaluations, but there's so much content. And some of that content could be just that. 
Uh, let's talk about wax. Let's talk about some people who have like chemi uh, uh, chemical engineering degrees. Uh, people who can really speak about this stuff and talk about it and let's have constructive conversations um, instead of having I'm not including the, the the candle enthusiast Facebook group but having online forums and groups where people are just arguing with each other based on speculation um, let's 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 get let's get let's get some people who can show us some facts and and let's learn together and grow and become knowledgeable on on candles uh and again if if nobody does it soon i'm just going to be forced to do it myself hopefully i don't know maybe we'll see a a, a candle enthusiast textbook candle textbook uh on the shelves of barnes and noble one day I can't tell you that I haven't already thought about it. Maybe not a textbook, but a book anyway. I can't speak for the safety of the oils, but glass, wicks, and wax should be safe for Yankee Candle Company. Great. I love it. Uh, Aaron, Aaron throws in, working with facts seem to be a tall order these days. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from with that. Uh, um, all right, folks, this has been a, a really great session. Uh, group, uh, Sunday, Smell It Sunday, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's always great when it's on the second channel, aromatically speaking. Just another incentive for you guys to, if you're not subscribed, give it a shot. Subscribe. I want to get to, I want to get uh, eventually this this channel at a thousand subscribers. That way we can YouTube will help us unlock um, us um, un unlock a lot of things that we can do for fun. It used to be that we I uh, I won't get into it, but as soon as I reached the on the second channel, all of the qualifications you needed to monetize your videos, to open up Super Chat, to put advertisements on your videos, to do all, you know, again, uh, uh, spot, work with sponsorships and all that thing. Uh, what happened was as soon as I reached the, the, what they wanted, they changed their terms and policies. And now we need a thousand subscribers, which I don't think is fair because I like the fact that this is a small, intimate group of folks but um, it's forcing me to really uh, to think harder about what kind of content I can put on this channel to expand the audience of this channel, get it up to a thousand subscribers so we can do more fun things. Uh, things like, uh, thank you so much, things like thumbs upping the video always helps. It seems like that doesn't do anything at all, but it really does a lot uh, with... Um, with YouTube, it, it shows YouTube that the video is relevant. Uh, so that's how people can find us. New subscribers can find us. Um, and something that I really want to promote because I'm always forgetting it. I've said it before. Rachel's gone, but make sure, even if you don't want to check in every day or every week, go. Everyone's got a Facebook page, right? Everyone's got a Facebook page. Go to the Candle Enthusiast Facebook fan group. Type that in in the search. It'll come up. Request to join. Uh, unless you're a serial killer, um, uh, I'm sure you will be more than welcomed to join the group. And, um, you know, don't, don't be a lurker. Share, share pictures. Share stories. Share your collection. Uh, share uh, anything you would like. Because I, as I found out, this group is a lot more than just candles and, and it's always a great fun positive place where you can turn to where you don't have to worry about being judged and criticized and um, is really just a place to remind you that there's actually kindness in the world there's people out there who are really nice so everyone have a fantastic week keep your eye on the eBay page for um, some uh, some candle items I got some Good finds from the Yankee Candle Village that are going up. I, of course, have the Kringle Candle Halloween collection up, going at a discounted price. Um, really trying to push those candles. 
um, raise money for our Halloween content or our autumn content and summer content. Um, other than that, subscribe, spread the word, spread the love, not just for Aromatically Speaking and Smell It Sunday, but uh, the main channel, The Candle Enthusiast. A great way of showing support here, right here on eBay. The Candle Enthusiast, limited to 50 mugs. Only 50 will ever be made with this design. That's, that's quite a lot. <laughs> 50, I understand. But there's just something about this mug. It makes the water taste so much better. I'm lying. I'm lying. But if you would like to get your hands on these, uh, they are available on eBay. 100% of the proceeds go back into the show. Thank you for joining for Smell It Sunday. When this video is fully uploaded, make sure you come on back. Leave a comment in the description below. I read every single comment. And I'm slowly getting better to responding to comments here and there. So one of these days on one of these videos if you post on all of them i will get back to you and we'll get to know each other a little bit better we'll have a little bit of conversation and communication will um it'll, it'll strengthen our our relationship i don't know what the heck i'm talking about but have a great sunday do something fun eat something fun make sure you're doing something that uh perpetuates happiness for you and your family, your loved ones, your friends. Thanks so much for joining. I will be seeing you folks soon, but until then, be good and enjoy. It's not summer, but this 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 weather that we're having, which is quite pleasant, and Travis throws in BBQ, so enjoy that. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.